Hello everyone, this is Zach here, and welcome to the Unstoppable Wartail Swordsman Guide. The Swordsman, or Swordy as I call them, is my favorite class and I think it is the most overpowered in Wartails. Why? Well, for the following reasons. It's a tanker and also deals very high damage, so it's a rare species. It is a part-time assassin as it can kill multiple enemies in a single turn due to the number of hits it can generate. The last count was round 12. It is also super mobile, which allows me to reach the pesky archer straight away. So I've mostly been playing with swordies in season 2 of my playthrough and I'm really really loving it. So without further ado, let's have a look at the build, the skills, the equipment, and how the heck does a swordie hit 12 times, if not more. The class specialization you'll want to choose is fighter. Now why is that? Fighter allows your swordie to wear heavy armor and a heavy helmet, which increases your defense while also having access to an extra damage dealing skill, Destabilizing Strike. Now this skill essentially reduces your enemy's guard to zero. Take the upgraded skill as well, because the upgraded skill guarantees a critical hit if the enemy's guard is zero. At level 3, take Valorous Duel. This skill grants you one temporary point, or one temporary Valor point, every time your sortie engages in battle. Since we're looking to kill and engage multiple enemies in a single turn, this is a very good temporary valor point generator. At level 5, this is where the fun starts. Take counter attack and upgrade it. The base skill enables you to attack an extra turn or perform an extra attack if an enemy attacks you when you are engaged with them. This works even if you disengage from battle. Now the upgraded skill grants your inspiration, which doubles your movement when you disengage from your enemy, whether because you're the one who initiated the disengage, or your enemy initiated the disengage, or they die while engaged. Why is this important? Well, once you, when you're looking to kill multiple units, having your movement doubled enables you to basically reach them pretty much anywhere on the map. At level 8, you become even more of a tanker, and damage dealer. Take hardcore training and upgrade it. The hardcore training skill at its default state means you won't bleed, you won't get poisoned, or you won't burn which is fantastic since any of those statuses depletes your health and it ignores armor. The upgraded hardcore training gives you 2 times rage which increases your damage by 10% since it is 5% per rage. For every status you are now in progress too. So not only do you have to not worry about poison clouds or burning fields, you should actually even run through them to get more damage. And it stacks throughout the battle. Now at level 10, take defensive repulse. Now you can't upgrade this, but why this is important is normally when you disengage from battle, you are hit with an opportunity of attack from your enemy. Choosing this skill gives you a 50% chance or a 1 in 2 chance for you to do the attacking instead. This is a very handy skill in one of our tactics, which I'll talk about later in this guide. Now finally, at level 12, take class specialization. This skill allows you to effectively unlock a skill from a previous level. And the skill that you would want to unlock from a previous level is Master Opportunist. Now this Master Opportunist skill is only available once you've unlocked the class specialization tool list. So if you haven't unlocked it yet, I would highly suggest waiting and then selecting this. If you can't wait and you want to choose something else, f feel free to do so, and you can always re-specialize when you go to the Brotherhood Training Ground. If you have access to this skill, upgrade this as well. In terms of stat build, allocate 16 points to movement. Now bear in mind, once you equip heavy armor, heavy armor reduces movement point by two. So really, your net movement is gonna be 14. Sorty 4 here is currently naked, that's why his movement points are showing as 16. This seems a little bit high, but for me, movement is very important. I want to ensure that my sword is able to engage an enemy during his first turn. Once you've engaged the enemy, you can either kill the enemy and cause a disengage, or you can actively disengage from battle because there's another target you want to hit. How are you able to do that? Once you disengage, the upgraded counterattack skill comes into play. It gives you inspiration for one round, essentially doubling your movement, and therefore allowing you to hit your priority target. It could be an archer that's really, really far away, and therefore you use your first engaged opponent as a stepping stone. And I'll actually show you an example of that later in this guide. 
Next most important skill, or stat, sorry, is critical hit. I would suggest keeping this between 23 and 25%. Now that seems pretty low, and neither here nor there, it's about 1 in 4 chance. But pair this with Crime and Chaos Path, and you can get this up to 50%. So if I were to go to Crime and Chaos Path, and hover over this banner, you will see that at level 11, all companions gain 4% crit hit chance per wanted level. My wanted level currently is 0. If I were to increase this to 5 wanted level, that means I get an extra 20% crit hit chance. So for Sortie 4 here, this crit hit goes from 24% to 44%. Now at level 12 Crime and Chaos, it will be 5% crit hit chance per wanted level. So that's 25% in total if you're at the max wanted level, which is level 5. So that gets me pretty close to 50%. The rest of the points that you can get, whether through leveling up, or sometimes when you rest in camp, you suddenly get a bonus where they can actually they gain an actual attribute point. Pour it onto strength if you want, or even pour it into crit hit, that's not a problem. Because crit hit not only increases your chance of a critical hit, it also increases the critical damage. Utility skills are also very important in this build, and the two skills are Wrath and Taunt. Now your companions either come with these skills, or if they don't, that's fine. You can go to the Brotherhood Training Ground, or the Black Market Agent, and purchase the skill books. Now Wrath is important because it gives you another damage dealing ability. Even though you can only use it on enemies that have less than 50% health, if you were to kill them with this skill, your companion or your unit gains Fury, which essentially ensures your damage of your next attack is increased by 50%. Now again, in this tactic where we're trying to engage multiple enemies, this makes it easier to then kill the next enemy, or at least deal a lot of damage. The next one is Taunt. So why is Taunt useful even though we're not actually dealing any damage? Well, it's to do two things. One, you want to avoid any of commands being ganked up on. You want to have one-on-one -on -one engages where possible. So this allows you to forcefully taunt your enemy to engage you, rather than ganging up on your single companion. The other thing is if you want to reduce their damage for that turn, they might be too powerful. This does that as well because it reduces the damage incoming by 50%. Let's talk about the equipment. With armor, always craft the best available heavy armor recipe you have. The reason for crafting rather than buying it from the merchants or hoping for a good drop is that any crafted armor will guarantee you at least two, if not three, armor layer slots. And armor layers essentially provides your troop or companion with additional stats. In this case, this crafted Akkadian steel battle plate has three armor layer slots. Now what armor layers are good for this build? Depending where you're at, whether it's early game, mid game, or late game, or depending on what you've unlocked, you've got a few options. Early game, if you unlock the Warriors Reinforced layer, select this, because this gives you two additional stats in strength. If you've unlocked the silver component, or silver section, of the armor layers, which is these three rows, you have one of two options. A bit defensive oriented is the Reinforced layer of the stag, because that gives you nine additional armor and two strength. If you want to increase your damage output, go with the Reinforced layer of the serpent, which increases your crit hit chance by 3% and strength by 2 once you've unlocked the Colossal version of the layers, again, you have two options. For more damage focus, choose the Colossal Reinforced Layer of the Serpent, which increases crit hit chance by 6% and strength by 4. If you're a little bit defense minded, that's fine as well. You can use the Colossal Reinforced Layer of the Stag, which gives you additional strength of 4 and additional armor of 18. You can obviously mix and match, depending where you're at with your build, and that's not a problem. When it comes to the sword, we'll be using single-handed swords because that allows us to equip a shield that gives us more defense, but as we'll come to it in shortly, also allows us to deal damage. Now back to the sword. It doesn't really matter what skills it has. What's more important is the oil that you apply. You need to apply the unstable oil. What the unstable oil does is after you attack an enemy in close combat, you have a 25% chance to follow up with another attack of opportunity. So basically, 25% chance to attack twice. This is, this is really, really awesome for this build. As mentioned earlier in this guide, 
Choosing destabilizing strike can be very beneficial. If you are able to proc the second attack, you're pretty much almost going to instant kill your enemy. The reason why? The first hit of destabilizing strike reduces the guard to zero. If you can proc the second hit, the second hit is pretty much going to be a critical hit because you've already reduced your enemy's guard to zero. Now comes the shield. Now we mentioned that we have the shield for defense, but also for offense. The reason for offense is if you can find a shield that has an active skill, basically a damage dealing skill, then it also gives you an opportunity to attack twice again and deal more damage. So in this case, we have the shield rampart and it has a skill tactical slam and it deals damage as well as increasing your damage for every bonus or debuff applied to the target in this unit. If you can proc the unstable all application, again, you get to hit twice. This ensures that you're hitting multiple times per turn and therefore potentially able to engage in multiple enemies in a single turn. When it comes to the helmet, the only important statistic, sorry, not the statistic, the stat, is the damage from attack of opportunity. In this case, you can see this helmet has a plus 4% because this will increase your damage output overall. Unstable all, any additional attack is actually considered an attack of opportunity. Your skill, counterattack, is also considered an attack of opportunity. So that's an increase in damage overall. Some other useful skills is, for example, stimulating coding. That's actually pretty complementary to this build. It increases damage by 20% if this unit has no debuff. Now, because the build already has hardcore training, which ensures that you're immune to bleeding, poison, and burning, you rarely have any statuses that will impact you. And as such, it's almost, almost, in most cases, a free 20% increase in damage. Now, there are some statuses that will, can still be applied, for example, fever. So you still have to be mindful of that. Now, lastly, the most important bit is the belt. You will want to craft and equip the unstable all concentrate. What this does is basically add an additional 25% chance to apply its effect. So essentially unstable all from having a 25% chance to follow up with an attack of opportunity will now have a 50% chance to follow up an attack of opportunity. So what this means for every attack, for every damage dealing skill you use, you have a one in two chance to attack again. So that's how you can hit so many times. So if you think about it, you hit once with your slice, you might hit twice because you proc it because that's one in two. Same with destabilizing strike, same with the shield skill, same with wrath, that all stacks up. And it also applies to counter attack. There is a chance to also hit twice when you counter attack. Another aspect that I think is very beneficial for this build is the type of profession that you choose. Now, my recommended profession is blacksmith. There are obviously other beneficial professions as well. For example, woodcutter, which gives you at master level four strength and six critical hit chance. But the reason why I choose or am recommending blacksmith is because it is one of the easier professions to level up once you already have a master blacksmith. A woodcutter, as an example, on the other hand, you would have to go around and constantly find areas to chop wood. Now, as a master blacksmith, you actually gain 10 additional strength attribute points. And that's really great to increase your damage output. Again, as you can see here, I have most of my sorties as blacksmith, two master blacksmith, two journeyman, three master blacksmith actually, because they're very, very easy to level up once you have a master blacksmith. So the big question is how does a sortie hit 12 times, if not more? Well, after going through the build, the equipment, the skills, essentially with the unstable oil application, plus the belt, every attack as an opportunity to trigger another attack. So if you count the number of attacks that you can actually perform in a single turn and then multiply that by two, that gets you about 12, if not more. So if we use Captain Sortia as an example, 
with slice where it's one attack skill destabilizing strike is another two tactical slam is number three wrath is number four plus we also have counter attack five and if we disengage from the battle with the enemy we also have a chance to actually attack as well so that's six and with the oil application essentially you have a 50 percent chance to attack twice for every attack so that's six times two that's 12. so that's how i come up with 12. if not it could be a little bit more depending on what other equipment or variations you build again you have to be pretty lucky because you have to prop 50 percent here another 50 percent here and also you can't always use broth but regardless it is a swordsman that can hit multiple times it is both tanky and the damage output is really high. Finally, in the last section of this guide, I'm going to go through a battle against with Alert the Rebel, level 12, and I'm going to show you how the, the build works, but also some of the strategies I deploy in fights. So let's get it going. Okay, so there's 11 of us, uh, 7 of us, sorry, and 11 of them. Um... Okay, so leader is there. That provides them with damage increased by 25%. That's the leader's buff. I'm going to put... Okay. So Captain Swordy will probably be on this side. And... Get you guys here. I think we need four on this side. And... Where is number seven? Ah, uh, number seven's down here. Okay, so probably get number... Captain here first. So let's get going. Let's see how many we can kill in one go. So Captain has quite a few skills to use. And it's great to go against strong men because they're generally a little bit weaker than, let's say, a Peace Bearer. Okay, so we've engaged. Um, let's see. And we've also got Repost now. So if I disengage... I'll activate your boss and I can kill him. So I just killed him with one skill effectively. Well, two if you want to count the repost. And now look at my movement. I can go really far because of counter attack here. If I disengage, I gain inspiration for one round, which essentially doubles my movement. So now I can reach anyone if I need to, even save companions. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the leader. Let's use a base attack. And it procced the attack of opportunity or the unstable oil application proc. So that's two enemies killed. Uh, let's see if we can go for this guy next. Shield bash. Great. So again, I'm very lucky. I procced it again. So I don't think I can proc with this one. So we'll, we'll taunt him just to get his attention. Okay, so we've got Repulse now. He's going to attack. So what we could do, we could go first, Swordy Jr. Yep. Let's go here. Let's kick him. The these are tougher. So it's unlikely we'll be able to kill them in one go. We disengage. Yep. We, Because we have the option of defensive Repulse, not this one, I need to find it. We have a 50% chance to deal an attack of opportunity instead of taking one when we disengage. So we saw there, as I disengaged, I attacked him instead. So I'm going to weaken him by taunting him. That way it won't hurt as much when he attacks me. Okay, I did commit a repost, but unfortunately, I had the blackout effect on me. Same here. So these enemies can be a bit annoying because of the, the blackout effect. Strong man. Okay, so let's go first. There we go. Potentially we can kill them. Let's disengage and see what that does. Okay, we did kill them. So that allows me to then now go for this archer. Because I always find archers very pesky. And there we go. Two kills. So it's really working in our favor now. I'm just going to stand next to him. Okay. Now it's your turn, Swordy 3. He's got three skills to use. Active skills. He didn't proc that one. 
Not on that one either. And on that one. So he's got really lucky. Oh, he did proc it. What happens if we disengage? And I got another one. So great. So let us taunt him. Okay. There we go. So he's almost dead. Almost. Finally, we've got two more here. Okay, Lieutenant Sorty. You'll see that here now I can't move. There's no more movement. So I don't know if I can kill him. Just to show you what happens later. It's not like it. Nope. Okay, I do kill him. Which is great. And you'll see I now have my movement again. And I can travel again really far. So if I need to support any of my companions, I can do that. So highly, highly mobile. I'm just going to engage him. He's a two-handed mace axe wielder, so he should be a, a bit weaker. Yeah, in terms of defense. And now again, I can travel really far. Um, Probably go here. Let's see how we go. Kick him. Okay, we didn't proc. Oh, we did. We did proc it. No proc. We'll disengage. And it's our turn. We actually got the attack of opportunity instead. We will taunt him back. And it's round two. Again, enemy reinforcements. Not too bad. There's only 10 in total. So, captain's all alone. Who's going next? Okay, you are. What's the best way? So, what I normally do is he's got inspiration, which is great. So he can get access to anyone. We can go to the archer first. I don't like archers. Okay, and we kill them. Let's go for this guy. He's a bit weaker as well. Okay, let us disengage. And we got hit instead. And we can actually use Broth now because his health is less than 50%. There we go, two kills. And and I like to deploy this tactic. It's called hit and run. I've hit them. I'm going to run back. Because you don't want to send your companions out here alone. And then they, they are surrounded by so many enemies. Okay, Blackout unfortunately doesn't hurt him. What we can do now, who's next? Okay, so let's deal with him. Okay, we didn't proc it. Let's try another one. Yes, we did. 400. The reason why it dealt 400 is because destabilizing strike would have reduced the scar to zero. We can now use raw. Okay, we didn't proc, and we use shield. There we go. So let's travel really, really far. Look at that. Back into the midst of our other companions straight away. So we can support them and back them up. Now you're going next. So we should just be able to use shield. Maybe the skill. No, we didn't proc it. So let us go with this. The base attack. No, he's very unlucky. Disengage. And there we go. So you have a lot of options and he can still attack. Let's go over him. He's the realizing strike. Two hits. Really good. Disengage. Again, we managed to hit the 50% and attack first. So he's killed. And again, we hit and run. Wait for them to come to us. Who is next? Okay, they can move. They're not going to hit us. They're too far away. So let's kill this guy. Uh, who should I use? Probably use Swordy 1. Use a base attack. Okay, and then Roth. It does use a lot of valor points. But it is highly, highly effective in killing multiple enemies. And also highly mobile. As you can see, I can reach him if I want to. Problem is, if I go there, I won't, to I won't be able to retreat. So I'm just going to kill this guy. And then hang around with Swordy number two. So what I could do is bring Lieutenant Swordy ahead. I could have attacked with Swordy Jr. All right, but I'm going to send. He'll be surrounded by Heart Killer. And crewmate. So let's let crewmate move forward. And then 
we can attack him from behind. Okay, we procced it. Look. Wow, that almost killed him. There we go. Even though he's carrying a shield and has high defense. So again, we'll hang around. We could have got straight to him, but we, we don't have enough movement. We can't go to him too, so we'll just hang around here. I think the other one's down there. So he comes forward. And Ravager will now come forward as well. It's great. New round starting. Hide Killer goes first. Who do I want? Let's get Lieutenant Sorty. So he has no shield, so he's going to be a little bit frail. And there you go. Just one hit. And he is lost. And he procced the second attack again. So one person multi-hit, multi-kill. So that's it for this build guide. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy the Swordsman. I find it really, really fun. Until then, take care. Have a great day. Bye.